Welcome to my workplace at Ranakhat, West Bengal, India. This is an edited video of a subluxated cataract. Subluxation is from 12.30 o'clock to 5 o'clock. This is the main incision at 11 o'clock, one side port at 1 o'clock, another side port at 8 o'clock. Now, two stab incisions for application of iris hooks. And now an air bubble is injected. Tripan blue dye is applied over the anterior capsule. And now as I wash the dye, I find some tags coming to the aspirating port of the Simco. It means there is vitreous strands. So I inject an air bubble, inject triamcinolone to identify the vitreous strands clearly and as I try to wash I can find a lot of vitreous strands. So I ask for a vitreous cutter. This is a 23 gauze cutter from Oatley, Switzerland. Some vitreous is coming out through the main incision. So we have to take care of that also. Vitectomy part is not edited in this video because this is the main part the viewer should concentrate at. This is cutting the prolapsed vitreous and I go through the side port at 11 o'clock and cut the vitreous strands just adjacent to the main incision. And thus the anterior chamber is made free of vitreous before doing capsular excess. And now SPMC is injected. This is viscoat and I'm very carefully making a cut on the anterior capsule. This subluxation is because of a blunt trauma so the remaining genule is strong. So I could find a tag and I have to go clockwise and I must not make a big rexus. I must make a rexis of about 4.5 millimeter so that I can apply and uh, I can apply a CTR capsular tension ring in the capsular bag. If the rexis is large the CTR may tend to come out. So this rexis is about 4.5 millimeter and this should be okay for this case. And now I apply the CTR at the third attempt. This is the first attempt, this is second didn't go and at the third attempt the leading end goes into the capsular bag and it is going in very nicely. As the seat here as I come to the trailing end I take a Sinsky hook in my left hand Hold the seat here very close to the eyelid with Macpherson's 
and very carefully I introduce the Sinsky hook and with the help of this Sinsky hook the seat here is placed in the capsula back here it goes so the seat here has gone into the capsular bag very nicely now I inject some more visco and then apply two iris hooks this is the first one at around two o'clock it is it has hooked the uh, rexus margin this is another hook at four o'clock it also has hooked the rexus margin so we have got support by CTR as well as by the iris hooks and now I try to chop the nucleus by two hooks but I could not do that then I go with the FECO hand piece vacuum is very low in subluxated cataract with this machine I don't use more than 200 vacuum now this is I'm trying to hold the nucleus then I found that it is very soft so I just mechanically supported the nucleus and chopped it and it was a very good crack and now I turn the tip of the FECO needle towards the right towards 7 o'clock try to make another chop but this was not a good crack at this time I find some more vitreous strand coming out from 4 o'clock at this time I inject some visco to remove that vitreous nicely I remove the iris hook for the time being we have to reapply that whenever necessary and then I use the cutter and remove this vitreous strand since we used tramsinolon the vitreous is anti vitreous is stained and whenever it prolapses into the anterior chamber we can easily identify this prolapsed strands yes the vitreous has been nicely trimmed and now I inject visco use two hooks and I'm trying to bring one heminucleus out of the capsula bag in the anterior chamber very gently I could bring out one heminucleus and I divide it with these two hooks itself into two pieces and now I can remove these two pieces very easily but these two pieces ha have come very close to corneal endothelium I could make out that it is only the lower fragment we could emulsify and this fragment is not coming so what I do is 
I come out inject visco and with the help of a Sinsky hook I push it down push it down at the iris plane and then again go with the fecal needle unless we take care of corneal endothelium take care of the posterior capsule unless we be patient and unless we be very cautious and proactive in such cases disaster can happen at any moment this surgery took 52 minutes I have edited it to about 22 minutes if I edit it further if one cannot follow the surgery so this is going to be a long video of 22 minutes I'm bringing out the other heminucleus and divided it into two fragments by the two hooks itself yes both the fragments have come out and now I inject now I push these two fragments again down to the iris plane previous experience and emulsify these two pieces nucleus management is not so difficult we just have to be cautious in such cases more difficult is the thick epinucleus at this time the people has become small so I apply the hooks to retract the iris leave the rexis margin at this moment take another hook and use the side port at 8 o'clock and apply another hook to retract iris here so that I can see clearly so that my field of vision enlarges and now as I do hydro the epinuclear shell gets dislodged as I try to aspirate first I inject visco now as I try to aspirate with Simco see what happens some more vitreous strands come out so probably I should have hooked the rexis margin anyway since the vitreous has come I inject some more tramsnolone acetate and use the cutter again take the 23 gauze cutter we have to sometime we have to give time to our assistants we cannot be impatient and we cannot lose our patience and say something odd to them for this kind of surgery needs cooperation of everybody cooperation of patient cooperation of assistants co cooperation of all the the atmosphere in the OT should be like a temple or a church or a mosque or 
that kind of environment. And now this is I'm using the cutter to remove some cortex also. It's just debulking the cortex. I know that the cortex will not come out. At this time, I'm very much cautious. I should not cut the capsule. Now, at this time, after injecting Visco, I'm thinking of applying the hooks again to the erexis margin. So I apply visco and then hook the erexis margin at one o'clock and or at four o'clock. We should be gentle in pulling the rexis margin. We cannot afford to tear off the rexis margin. And now at this time, I'm thinking how to prolapse this, how to manage this thick epinuclear shell. So I'm trying to mobilize this with the help of this 23 gauze simco probably a 20 on gauze simco is better for this thick epinucleus 21 or 22 gauze simco and this is a 23 gauze simco it is doing its job but it is taking little more time but I'm always cautious to be away from the corneal endothelium, protect the corneal endothelium all the time. And here it is. The epinuclear shell has got dislodged nicely. As I inject visco here, I can find that the epinuclear shell is shifted towards 7 o'clock. Now I am using this instrument. This is, I call this posterior capsule protector. I designed this. This is uh, iris spatula, a modified iris spatula. It has been curved in such a way that it can it conforms to the posterior capsule and we get some space above it to manage nucleus or epinucleus. And here it is. The epinucleus has been nicely managed. And now I am trying to remove the cortex cortical cleanup is not at all easy in such situation. However, I am trying to remove the cortex from 9 o'clock, 8 o'clock, the area where the genule is normal so that I can apply some force to pull it. And here it is. The cortex from that area has come. And now I inject visco and now I remove the iris fork from 8 o'clock because I want to go through this sideboard and I remove the cortex from 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock from that area. Simco is much safer than bimanual irrigation aspiration. We get very
very good control with Simco in such cases. With bimanual, the control is always less than Simco. Maybe a fraction less, but still the control with Simco is always a bit more for cortical aspiration in subluxated cataracts. And now is the time the cortex has been nicely cleaned. We release this hook, but don't remove it. And I am removing this hook because I am going to implant the IOL just one hook supporting the erexis margin is enough. Uh, here goes a uh, hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens in the capsular bag. Both the haptics should go into the capsular bag at one shot. Here it is. It has gone. Both the haptics have gone into the capsular bag. If one haptics remains above the texas margin then we have to rotate it manipulate more that can be you know that can cause more genular stress and now i remove this iris hook and now i used a sensky hook to dial the lens so that one haptic supports the area of genular dialysis. Here it is. So this haptic is supporting the area from 3 o'clock to 1 o'clock. Probably I should have rotated it little more. But cortical cleanup is done very nicely. The side ports are closed by hydrating corneal stroma, and the case is nicely done. Probably we should have used a capsular tension segment to center the bag properly, but it was beyond my patience. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a surgeon better than I am. Serve the mankind with love, respect and your great surgical competence.